Hey, I'm Kev Kev, Mr. Cole, welcome back to MotoGP 18 as Mayo is charging at the start of his air pod on the racing career. He's grabbed two wins, that were two in Qatar and Argentina. Can he make it a hat-trick for the first time in Moto3 with a victory around the Circuit of the Americas circuit in Austin, Texas? And before you head there, you may have noticed in Argentina, it's still a bit easy for Mayo. And we keep upgrading this bike as well, particularly the power, so... Let's get up to realistic, let's get up to 100% shall we? Should we go up to 102? That seems to be a good level. So here goes Mario then for the first of three laps in qualifying. Which he might do. Unless he got under six minutes remain, it's going to be very close. As we go towards this first corner, very tricky. But nicely got the bike into the apex. Let's see how he does against these much tougher opponents as well. It was a breeze in Argentina for Mario. Absolute breeze. Seems to be very much at home on board one of the top three bikes in the field. Probably should have seen this coming better, shouldn't we? The pace, particularly in qualifying, has been astonishing. So let's see what happens here around circuit where Madonna's have gone quick in the past. Mario ain't quick and this is his first opportunity to win a Moto3 race last season on board that Avintia and he got close, very close. Fortunately ran into issues. And so he wasn't able to hold on in the end to connect coattails and even then at the final corner and into his current teammate as well, so he didn't quit the podium in the end that he really did deserve. So for Mario, very happy hunting ground as and it's like Mazes won qualifying round here. We'll see if that comes true, just like we saw with Jorge Martin in the Argentina. Let's go in this middle sector, connect with a 217.3. I haven't really seen him on a kickstart his season yet. Final Connect. Let's see if he can do it round here. Well, of course, he won last season. He's been a very good rider as well. Round in the pass against Adam McDonald. So we'll see if Connect comes to play. Let's see if Mayo's come to play. Let's go out the final corner. Oh, of course he has. Of course he has. So we are looking at Groove McDonald on pub almost the same over Martin Kinnett, D Genitone, all Italian, second row. And then looking outside the top ten, got Mesa rounding out ahead of Bastianini. And then looking further, Barry got that a porter down on the centre row alongside McPhee and Loy. Very disappointed from the Italian. And right at the back is Yachenko and Foggia. So here's McDonald revving up at the start, waiting for the lights to go out. For this five lapper. And it looks like Martin's got the jump on him. We we'll see on the run to the first corner. If anyone else is down the inside. Look at Kinnett. Down the inside, not just Martin McDonald. Into the lead, but then McDonald around the outside. What a wise move that is. Everyone battling down the inside. McDonald sees the space. And Mayo leads. With the S section, which would be perhaps his strongest section of the lap. Got McPhee ahead of Binder in 18. Once again, a good start from the Scott. Lonzo Lopez down in 21st. What are you doing, mate? Down with Tuba. You've got Yachenko battling with Masaki as well. But Otto's into the top 10 of Arbelono. And Della Porter down the 23rd, battling with Livio Loy. That is not the Della Porter we saw last season, battling for third in the championship with his teammate. Being best of the rest behind Cadet and Martin. It's all a bit wide for Mayo. But now that we see the straight line speed of the other part. Six tenths ahead. Once again, it's just going to be a cozy race for him, isn't it? Just like Argentina. It's just looking unbeatable in the moment. There's Suzuki and Suzaki battling. So it's DJ Antonio and Antonelli for sit for along with Vino. He goes Holgate Martin past Bezeki. 
He's proven to be that best of the rest rider, Mahone Martin. It's not Kinnett so far this season. Here's the Italian youngster. And it's a 1.3 second lead from it all. I did make the opponents much tougher this time. It's just not phasing Mario though. He just enjoys his bike too much. He enjoys his circuit too much. Maybe we should have put it up to maybe the next up difficulty. Even though he's running wide everywhere. He's going to cross the line with over a second lead. 1.1 seconds ahead of Kinnett. Martin in third. Bezzecchi, Antonelli, Di Antonio, Mino, Bacchinini, Arbolino and Ramirez. Then out the top 10, the Spaniard. But well, not a good start. We'll see if we can hold on to it though. As McVee's racing through the field up to 17th now. And a maze of Dale Porter back into the top 20 at a binder. Got Bullock and Hoy back in for 25th. Not where you expect to see the veterans. And Bullock is an interesting case. He came in as quick as lightning. But he's just gone backwards and backwards and backwards. Really is struggling in Moto3 now. And you've got someone alongside him like Foggy, a fresh faced teenager who's outperforming him. It's not good in not looking good for the former front runner. And then we also saw Fabio Courtois have his struggles in Moto3 coming up as the double. Junior Moto3 World Champion or the CEV World Champ Champion in Moto3, as it was known. We did that twice, having to, they had to adjust the wall so you could step up. You basically had the Max Verstappen wall, but in MotoGP terms. And then he started off in Nut, promising at first on board the KTM. Now on board the Leopard, I think it was he moved to. It never came together in Moto3. It took a couple years to really get going. Again, in his first year in Moto2, it wasn't exciting, but now it's just switched on on board that speed up. Speed up done a good job of the bike, done a much better job. And with Cortuaro now launching himself into the Moto GP window. Of the unlikeliest movers into MotoGP in recent times up there with Xavier Simon. At least Thomas Saluti's always been decent in Moto2. You can't say the same about Simon, unfortunately. He had his days a few years back. And now he's just not quite at that level, the Belgium. It's Bastianini up to seventh head of Mino. Yachenko ahead of Lloyd for 27th. Oh no, Lloyd's had enough of that. Still for the Belgium. It's not working out in the moment. You remember, he was on this bike, Livio as well. Had his chance to shine in Moto3. Unfortunately, one man was a bit better than him and won the championship. So for Livio. Tough teammate. They might be stuck here forever now, Moto3, for the time being. As if you don't show your class in any of these Moto2 or Moto3 class in like the first two years, maybe three years, boy, it gets tougher to move up. We're seeing that with Alex Marquez in Moto2. Should be stepping up to MotoGP, really, but just not showing enough. And at the moment, one Mir is not that far off him. Less than a race win off him in the championship. From a rookie compared to a guy in his fifth year. I think it is in the championship. That is not a good look for Alex. He's just not as good as his son. And it's no fault of his. It's just unfortunate that his brother happens to perhaps be the best motorcycle race in the world at the moment. So he's always going to be compared to Mark, but Alex is a damn good race in his own right. Challenging for the Moto 2 Championship, a Moto 3 Champion as well ahead of Jack Miller. 
in what in a title battle got a bit nasty at times. Be honest, looking back now, it looked more like Miller lost that as well. He really did lose his head at times, Miller. And Alex Marquez just kept cool, calm, picked up the points, won the championship. And I'm saying that Marquez was, you know, very good as well. As we go on to the final lap of the race, maybe Mario will follow in the footsteps of Alex Marquez. He's had decent notes like he will at the moment. He's got Suzuki and so it's like he's not even riding that well around. He's seen he's keep missing apexes every lap, but he's just riding away from the field. I can just ramble because he's just he's just cruising, absolutely cruising his Mario. I mean, we thought he had to step up. After his move from Avintia, but this is even better than predicted, really. It's all oh, a bit wide over the curb. At least he's staying upright, Mario. And that's another big change from the last season. You saw he had to push so hard on that Avintia, perhaps pushing that bike too hard, led to mistakes, led to falls. The gap's so big, they're not even showing it on the right-hand side now, as they were pulled into the points there, the Suzuki. About time. You really saw that near the end of the season as well. You know, he may have won a couple of races, Mario, but boy was he racking up the mistakes as well. Especially in qualifying, pushing for good qualifying slots. Now on this bike, it's an absolute dream to ride. He's cutting out those mistakes. Ramirez dropped down to 13th now. McPhee looking for a point ahead of Sasaki. Two ahead of Nuruddin. What's happened to Nuruddin this season as well? This is a 5.7 second lead for Mario. Are you kidding? We are going to have to put it on the toughest. Next time round, Jerez. First Spanish round of the season, remember. MotoGP, there's four Spanish rounds on the calendar. And there was a time when they had three American rounds with the Guna Seca and Dinapolis and the Circuit of the Americas. I know that was very brief because the Laguna got quickly canned. Then Indianapolis followed. And so we're left with the Circuit of the Americas, which is a very apt home, I would say, for the motorbikes. It's one of the few circuits, especially modern circuits, which works for bikes and cars. As their Porto Suzuki now for 14. Alonso Lopez has suddenly woken up and realised the points in the offing. As their Porto Ramirez for 13. So it's a, I find it a much better circuit to ride round, to watch the bikes round, than even the cars. And it was designed to return F1 to America. After what turned out a bit of a disaster around Indianapolis, of course, with 2005. Even though Indianapolis was a perfectly fine course, the first few races around Indianapolis were superb in F1. Forty, thanks to Michelin and 2005 Tigate, you never recovered from that in the next couple of years. Didn't help when you saw the likes of Michael Schumacher give the win to Barco at the line. Because Ferrari did that earlier in the season, Schumacher thought, oh, I'll do this, I'll just slow down, try and make it a dead heat. Probably the worst place to try that, Michael. But then maybe we'll ask the Austrian fans as well how they felt about Barco having to lift up and let Schumacher through when he had an already ginormous lead in the championship. It's one of the most unnecessary team orders we've ever probably seen in F1. It was in Barco's contract to do it, unfortunately. But anyway, Circuit of the Americas, damn good for motorbikes and damn enjoyable as well. Despite track limits become a bit of an issue, especially in that first section that we've seen in recent years. Still, may or say it's a brilliant racetrack to ride around. As he crosses the line and wins again for the first time, three from three in Moto3. There's another clean race, another 
spraying of the champagne. Lots of reward as well. And he was even more dominant in the race for the first time this season. 1.2 seconds faster than Kinnett. 6.3 ahead in the lead. Well, he had to bash off the Grassini twins to grab second. And DJ and Antonio beat Martin to that podium position. It really is a changing in the order in Moto3. This is pretty nice to see. Uh, so I didn't see this in previous edition. See this much sea change between seasons. So that is good to see with Bezeki in fifth, Antonelli sixth, Bastianini in seventh, Mino in eighth, Otto in ninth, Arbolono in tenth. Rodrigo, Kornfeld, Ramirez with points again. So two can Della Porta grab the final point with almost a second ever Alonso Lopez. But three rounds out the top 20. Right the back is Masaki. So the Riders Championship is already over a race win lead for Mario McDonald. 30 points ahead of DJ Antonio grabs up to second, a single point ahead of Bezeki, who's a single point ahead of Martin, who's a single point ahead of Kinnett, who rounds out the top five now ahead of Antonelli. But the Italian still remains in sit ahead of Bastianini. He's got 25 points, already 50 points, two race wins behind his teammate. What is going on? The Mino in eight. Rodrigo up to ninth ahead of Della Porti has just 15 points this season. Dreadful for the Italian. Confirmed 11th, Ramirez 12th. Atta up to 30th, Albalona up to 14th. Sasaki falling big to 16th. Alonso Lopez is somehow up to 18th. Better than on point scores so far this season ahead of Albert Arenas. And we've got Nurdin up to 23rd as well. Livo Loy is winning the wooden spoon at the moment though. As we can see, he's getting up towards that first rider status. I think he's just over halfway now. Is Mario as he's up to level 63 for riding position, throttle manager and brakes management, 64 for the angle. And let's look at the breakdown. Look at those development points for the team once again and all of that reputation earned. No doubt some Moto2 teams already sniffing around Mario for next season. As in MotoGP, Dovi won in a spectacular duel with Marquez. In Marquez land as well, you don't see that often. You only Zarco rounding out the podium. But Alex Marquez gained revenge for his brother in Moto2, winning head of Pacini and Bagnaia. So once again, we need to bike the vet. We've almost got 10,000 points to plug into this bike. So we've been concentrating on power. Shall we just had some more power? Make this bike the most powerful thing ever. And then let's actually look at other components. So the brake, suspension frame, or AI dynamics. Now we head to a res, that is gonna be lots of braking, lots of flowing through fast corners in second and third gear, or fourth gear, even. So, do you want the brakes or do you want to improve the frame and it, or AI dynamics? As you're gonna be lots of leaning, Makes the bike react faster when steering. Increases the rate of descent of the bike when cornering. That's actually a tricky decision. Uh, so let's see the aerodynamics. So if you go for penetration, that increases top speed. Downforce increases acceleration. We don't have to worry about wheelies too much at this level though. We don't have to worry about top speed too much in the res, but we have increased it anyway. What about suspension? Having a look at this. Hair, hair dynamics. I don't I can't even say words now. Shocks. Or ability of the shocks to absorb the surface roughness is already superb. Improves the bike's stability, does the elasticity. So let's improve the brake, shall we? Try and prevent some locking. You could feel that into the first corner, even on this bike, and go to that. The front wasn't quite as stable as you want under braking. Even then you saw with Mario, he's just racing away from everyone. So what do you want to increase? The braking power or the wheels from locking when braking? Let us go with the braking power is damn good already. Let's go with the prevent the locking, shall we? So that is our bike improved. As next time out, we will be heading to Spain for the first time this season. Can Mario make it four from four to start? The season, and someone take a picture of that. We've got to frame that. Never seen that before with any McDonald, I don't think, 
in any class. As, let's see if Mario can make it a perfect 100 from 100 next time out. So, for watching, we'll find out then.